Filmmaking can be a personal process, and that is reflected in Best Picture nominee, The Fablements, a movie based on the life of one of our generation's most celebrated directors, Steven Spielberg. But Spielberg didn't take on this task alone. By his side, author and screenwriter Tony Kushner, who helped to bring the experiences that made Spielberg who he is to the screen. But for Kushner, it wasn't the pressure of telling Spielberg's story so much as it was the, the self-imposed responsibility of writing a film that families can relate to. Our Lindsay Davis had the chance to sit down with Kushner. Here's their conversation. One more thing, Dolly. Let's not tell your father. It'll be our secret movie, just yours and mine. How much of this story is really Steven Spielberg's life story? Um, all of it, except not necessarily in the order that it happens. And there are little details that are changed. Like, he had one bully, not two. I grew up in Louisiana, and I had two bullies. Go on and say sorry. You're getting me in trouble with my girl. The meeting with John Ford at the end of the movie happened verbatim, but it happened about a year and a half earlier in Stephen's life. But that happened when he's like, now get the F out of my office. Uh, <laughs> word for word, the first time Stephen told me the story, almost 19 years ago, I wrote it down because I thought it was the greatest thing I'd ever heard. They tell me you want to be a picture maker. Um, yes, sir, I do. Why? This business... It'll rip you apart. David Lynch brought his own special, uh, amazing qualities to it. And it's such a great moment in the history of film that Steven Spielberg, when he was young, met John Ford. Now remember this. When the horizon's at the bottom, it's interesting. When the horizon's at the top, it's interesting. When the horizon's in the middle, it's boring as now, good luck to you. And get the out of my office. Okay. Thank you. My pleasure. But it actually, I think, is the perfect ending because what he's really saying is you can't control the forces that you set loose when you make art. Uh, you have to be humble in the face of the stuff that you're playing with because it's powerful. It's about the work. It is, really. This was a difficult film for Steven to do. It's unlike anything he's ever done. You know, it seems silly to say I'm proud of Steven Spielberg, but I really am proud of him. He put himself on the line in so many ways and took such uh, personal risks. I'm really so honored to be a part of it. Did you see it early on? At more than even a challenge, but some pressure in telling Steven Spielberg's life story? The pressure in a funny way wasn't so much telling his life story as making sure that we were making a movie that people who don't really care about him or his movies or movies in general could still see this and enjoy it the way that you would enjoy any movie about a family um, and about a young kid discovering a talent and, and a vocation. So beautiful what you made, Dolly. You know, one word that comes to mind is empathy. We feel, as the viewer, so much for both of his parents. Even his mom, you know, who's having this affair. But yet, I think we're kind of sympathetic to her. How do you write that? One thing that you do is you get Michelle Williams to play her because she's such a rich, extraordinary, complicated actress. I had to crash it a whole lot of times, oh. but the train never got hurt. Really? <laughs> I thought that was the greatest show on earth. <laughs> I was really moved when I first started hearing Stephen's stories about his mother. Aaliyah was a woman of a generation. It's right before the feminist movement really coheres as this kind of force in society. And these were women who were being told that a career was a possibility for women, but they weren't really uh, exactly encouraged to pursue it. Sammy Fableman, God damn it, for weeks now there's been nothing but disrespect from you. Disrespect? Damn it to hell, I'm your mother! I wish you weren't! If you had kids, if you had a family, which is what you were supposed to do, it was all about them and you were supposed to put yourself 
on the shelf. And there was this kind of mixed message going out to women, I think, of that generation. Part of what makes her deserving of empathy and that makes her a moving character is that she's somebody who has sacrificed a lot. She was a great mother, and she tries to make her marriage work, but she falls in love with another man and tragically doesn't fall out of love with her husband. She still clearly loves him, but she's not in love with him. And she tries to make it work. And when it gets to the point where she can't sustain that, where the contradiction is too much, she makes a decision to do what she feels she needs. And the idea that her happiness wasn't completely about us is kind of terrifying. But mothers are people too. Your favorite movie or first movie that you remember seeing really having an impact on you? Oh my gosh. I saw a Joseph Mankiewicz film when I was about nine years old called The Honey Pot. And it's a very complicated plot. And my father and I went to see it. My father was a very smart man, but he couldn't follow the plot. And in the car trip home, he said, I didn't understand what was going on. And I explained the plot to him. And he was not easily impressed. And he was impressed by that. And I really feel like that's the moment when I first thought, maybe this is something I know how to do. First thing you did after you found out you were nominated. I was walking my dog in Central Park, and my husband called me on the phone and said, so congratulations. And then I sat down with my other dog walking friends, and we had uh, coffee in Central Park. And, uh, and I said, I, you know, how nice, <laughs> how great. <laughs> and your favorite snack to eat when you're watching movies? My favorite snack at all times is chocolate chip cookies. But I want to lose weight before <laughs> the uh, ceremony because I want to fit comfortably in my tuxedo. But I think sometimes it's just microwave popcorn. Always does the trick. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.